we can use Taylor polynomials to help us solve differential equations. Computers, calculators, mobile devices, they're all really good number crunchers, especially if we have repetitive number crunching, and that's what Taylor polynomials help us do. What Taylor polynomials do is they numerically approximate a function near a specific point. We're going to call that point x0. You might have heard of Maclaurin series. A Maclaurin series is simply a Taylor series, but x0 is equal to 0. So what is the Taylor polynomial? What we can do is say that any function f of x, well, not necessarily any functions, but functions with Taylor polynomials are equal to a Taylor polynomial of the nth order plus some remainder. You could also think of this as the error. So this is called an nth order Taylor polynomial. And we're always going to be thinking about these Taylor polynomials centered around a specific x value. We're going to call it x0. The Taylor polynomial includes all the previous terms up to that point. That is, p sub n equals all Taylor polynomials up to and including n. So what does that look like? p sub n is equal to f evaluated at x0 plus the first derivative of f evaluated at x0 times x minus x0, plus now the second derivative evaluated at x0, and that's going to be divided by 2 factorial. We're then going to multiply that by x minus x0 squared, plus the third derivative evaluated at x0 divided by 3 factorial, and I can Hopefully you can see where that would go. I could also write this as a summation. That summation for the Taylor polynomial. Again, remember, we're not saying the polynomial is the function. It's the function, and if we added this error term, this remainder, that would be the entire function. So it's a summation from i equals 0 to n of f to the kth derivative. That's what those parentheses mean. Evaluated at x0 or x0. Divided by i factorial i factorial i exclamation mark that kind of looks weird but i factorial times x minus a to the ith power and i've now rewritten it as x naught or x zero some books use a so be rude of me to switch conventions in the middle of explaining this so i won't you can also think of this recursively this is really repetitive to calculate by hand but especially once we write it as a recursive form Hopefully you could see how this could be pretty easily done in a computer, in MATLAB, something like that. So let's go ahead and do this by hand for two examples. Let's start off with f of x equals e to the x. I'm, let's do the fourth order Taylor polynomial. That means that i is going to go from 0 to 4, so you actually end up with 5 terms. I know I'm going to need to take 4 derivatives, however, so let's go ahead and do that. And then we sit back and appreciate um, e to the x. And let's go ahead and build that polynomial. So my approximation for e to the x is equal to f of 1 plus f prime evaluated at 1 times x minus 1 plus f double prime evaluated at 1 times x minus 1 squared divided by 2 factorial, etc. down to f of the fourth derivative. Okay, we've got this centered at 1, so we're going to say e to the x is approximately equal to f of 1 is just e, e to the first is e, plus e times x minus 1, plus e times x minus 1 squared over 2, plus e times x minus 1 to the third over 6, plus e times x minus 1 to the fourth divided by 4 factorial, which I believe is equal to 24. And that is what the Taylor series approximation for e to the x centered at 1 is. We could do the same thing with sine and cosine. Let's go ahead and pick sine and then write its derivatives. All right, those are the derivatives. So we can say that f sine of x is approximately equal to all of this. Again, this is centered at 1. So let's look at what this looks like graphically. So let's look at first 
what our e to the x is supposed to look like. And again, we're talking about what e of x looks like at the value 1. If I look at my first two polynomials for Taylor, you can see that at the point 1, it's exactly the same, but it doesn't take far for, as we get further and further to, from that point, that my approximation isn't that good. If I add three terms, it's looking a lot better, and four terms, that looks really good. Now again, if I go way out here, we saw, start seeing it not being quite exactly e equal. But again, this is around the point x is equal to 1. So I do think our four polynomial terms, or five, it's the fourth order, but there's five terms, are actually pretty close to the real thing. Let's look at my sign. This is what sign should look like. Again, we're looking at around 1. Here's my first two terms. Here's my first three terms. And then I think I went up to the fourth terms. Um, yeah, this is, I jumped ahead. So you can see that around one, it's pretty good. It's not exactly right there, but if I kept adding polynomials, it actually would work out. So here is looking at sine, and we're looking at a couple of different values for n. And as we see, we get more and more values for n. That curve, the Taylor polynomial, starts looking more and more like a sine wave. This one happens to be centered around zero. So why are we bothering with this? Well, it just so happens that we're going to be able to solve differential equations using these Taylor polynomials. So let's say I wanted to solve the differential equation y double prime equals 3y prime plus x squared y. That is, I want to find the equation y equals what that makes this true. Well, I can expand that solution out using my Taylor series expansions. Notice the first two terms I've been given already. That's a great start. And if I look at my equation here, I find I can find y double prime by plugging into the values that I know for y prime and y. Again, these are at initial conditions, so my x zero, my x naught is actually zero. So to find y double prime, I just plug in the y prime and y values that I have for initial conditions into my equation up there in the box, and I get that y double prime is 3 times 5, since that's the first derivative of y evaluated at 0, plus 0, since x is 0, times 10, or that equals 15. And I can take the derivative of both sides of this and get the next step, or y double prime, the first derivative of that, is y triple prime. The derivative of y prime is 3y double prime. And then I'm going to have to use the chain rule for x squared y. I get 2xy plus x squared y prime. And I can do this for the fourth and the fifth derivatives. And again, I need to use the chain rule multiple times. So once I have this worked out, all I have to do is plug in my values. y triple prime is going to be just equal to 45. The fourth derivative works out to be 155, and my fifth derivative is 495. So if I put this all together, my fourth order polynomial for this differential equation centered at zero is this. Again, it seems kind of tedious to do this by hand, but for a computer, this is a piece of cake. So I do want to point out that Taylor Siri Polynomials are not always guaranteed to exist. You might run into cases like if you had a fractional power of x, you would eventually get so x was the denominator. That would be bad if we were centered around zero. But I'm not going to talk about convergence too much. I just want to get a basic idea of how we can use Taylor polynomials to help solve differential equations.